Collect the silent on it, and then you start now 48. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back to Talk to Podcast, where you talk to anyone from anywhere about anything. Today we're talking to John Adams, okay? So before Hi we guys. get this started, John, so just say hello to everyone there. Hi guys, John Adams here in Cove. Thank you very much, PJ, for coming to my house today. No worries, no worries. It's a real honor to have you here. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure having you uh, you having us here, basically. This is now where I live. As you can see, all the arts in the back. But before we get into that, I just want to say to everyone there, I want to say my condolences to everyone that's suffering in South Africa, everything that's gone in there. I want to say rest in peace to Biz Marquis, who died yesterday at age 57, I believe. Great artist of hip-hop. If you don't know, get to know, look up in his history. And I also want to say rest in peace to everyone that's fallen for, you know, victim of this uh, horrible um, uh, pandemic disease that we're suffering from, COVID-19, whether it's all the COVID that's coming up. Rest in peace to everyone. And for everyone that's suffering from this, Hopefully everybody stays safe and recovers from this. Let's get to the shits. Okay, here, so here, John. So uh, basically, um, I, I went on your website and I was looking into your, uh, to your, to your, you know, looking into your all your arts, everything that you do. Uh, first things first, I want to know. I want to start from the beginning and find out exactly how you got you, you went about art and stuff. Because you say you were born in Dublin. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, at what age you realized that you were like a great painter? Well, I don't know if I ever realized I was a great painter, PJ, but basically when I was in school in Bray in County Wicklow, yeah. I had a teacher there teaching art and she saw that I had some talent. So she helped me. She said, you should think about going to art college. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even realize there was a college, especially for art. For art yes. And this is when I was nearly finished school in fifth year, I think. Uh, I still didn't even know there was such a thing as an art college. So it was a big surprise to me to even hear that people studied art seriously as a okay. career. Okay. So it had never occurred to me. Um, I was contemplating doing business actually because my dad was a businessman and I thought, you know, probably better to follow in to his follow footsteps. In footsteps. And yeah. I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Okay. And, you know, even up to the age of 35, I still wasn't really sure. I tried so many jobs mm -hmm. and um, eventually decided at to go back to it. Yeah, eventually yeah. decided at the age of 35 to stick to the art because it's a long story. If you want to hear it, I can tell We're it. We're here for it because, you know, I just wanted to stop it. But at 25, it's never too late for anyone, really. You understand? Yeah. People that, you know, get lost at 25, they be like, oh my God, I lost. And they get very depressed about it. They beat themselves about it's it. It's you know? crazy because, you know, life has so many different paths that you can take mm. you know we we all are confused when we're in school we don't how, how are you supposed to know what you want yeah. to do as a career um for a start the whole curriculum in school isn't really designed to help kids decide Talk on a career it. Talk you know? about it. it's really the, the curriculum in school is pretty basic mm -hmm. it doesn't prepare kids for life outside school at all I, I, I often I often spoke about that a lot. I often if we can talk about here we can gonna go on a long podcast. Today I wanna to focus on you yeah. and what you do. It's amazing when I walked in here, everything that I saw. You understand? Uh, Thank I, you very much, PJ. The I'm very that you, do it. you guys you guys have to see this whole team and the work that John does. John, I wanna know exactly um basically when when did you start doing like you know, because I saw some of your work um Cork Airport. Yeah, exhibitions and stuff like that. Yeah. Some that was of a amazing. few years ago. Yeah, some you of saw that work. there, did you? Yeah, I went in. No, I didn't see it there, but I went into your website okay, because obviously, yeah, yeah. Um, um, when I wanted to basically come and talk to you on a podcast, because I did, I did art as well in school. I was oh, big into good. art. I did few of my paintings and stuff like that. I think when it, when when I realized the political side about it, I gave up. I was just like, okay, this is too much. Because I did art history and I study. I was into it, you know, yeah. um, the whole painting and everything, everything about it was into it. Um, I wanted to talk to you about uh, basically um, your style of painting. You say you have three style of painting. Yeah, basically because um, in this country, the, ga the galleries and the art establishment, they kind of pressurize artists to stick to one style mm -hmm. because they want people to be able to walk into a gallery and recognize the artist's work straight away. Okay. That is what the gallery owners want. Mm -hmm. For me, that's not art. You know, if you do the same shit all the time, mm -hmm. how can that be art? Because
because art is supposed to be expressing yourself. Yes, yes. You know, true. art is a form of expression, I think. You know, a lot of people find it hard to actually say what art means. Mm -hmm. Just describing art, what art is, a lot of people find it very hard. And I think it's becoming harder for people because what they're showing in the galleries, especially in Ireland and a lot of England as well, they're showing this conceptual art, which is basically, it's not painting, it's not sculpture, it's, it's kind of installations, some of it's video work, Right. But a lot of it is just what's in the artist's mind mm -hmm. and it doesn't really concentrate on the skills of art, like the, the making of the art. You think that's a new form that's art taking because art has been took many forms. Because I, I went to Monsieur, Monsieur de Say in, in, the, in France, in Paris, and I went in there and I was able to look at some of the stuff. I was able to look at some of the, you know, Henri Matisse stuff, you know, yeah, some of the old stuff, some yeah. of Ida, some of the Monet stuff, some of the Manet stuff. Yeah, and I was talking. able to... These, yeah. these are, in my mind, these are yeah. real artists. You that's, know. that's how I was able to, to communicate with your art because yeah. you're able to do that type of stuff as well. And then you run into some of the abstract stuff as well, yeah. to understand. Um, from an artist's point of view, how do you switch that off? Because when I was doing art, I like to do abstract because I did not want to be back, just the way you, you, you spoke about it. I didn't want to be boxed into a way. Yeah. You know, just you're going into one way. So I wanted to be able to make mistakes and correct them in an artistic way. Yeah. Do you understand? How do you set your mind? What's your mindset when you're going into a painting there? Okay, well, I just talk about my three different styles first. Um, okay. Because I think it's basically important for me to show how my art developed. Mm -hmm. I, I went to four different art colleges when I was... Um, 17 i went to my first art college which was the national college of art and design in dublin mm -hmm. and then i went to dunleary college of art yeah. then i went That's to a very college, good college I heard. Cork, very, yeah. cork college of art which is the crawford college of art and then i went to limerick college of art and basically i got kicked out of all four art colleges were you just because bad or, or you, we, we, well, we're no, not that bad I was, art? I was just... actually very hard working, one of the hardest working students, but they didn't want me learning how to paint in a traditional way, which is what I wanted to do. I went okay. to art college to learn the skills of painting. Well, you're not going to believe this. They don't actually teach it in art college. Painting is not really respected in the art colleges and the art establishment in Ireland anymore. Painting and sculpture is not really shown in a lot of the public art galleries. It's it's all this conceptual art, which leaves the people kind of wondering, what is art? You know, this is the question I was going to ask you. What is art? If you go into the gallery here in Cove, the Serious Art Centre, it's supposed to be a public um, art centre, which is for the locals and for the local community but they constantly show these conceptual art exhibitions that nobody really understands. You know, it's kind of stuff like you might have a television in the corner, a big rock in the middle of the room, and people go in there and they go, what the fuck is this? But to somebody yeah. else, to some, but I don't know, I don't know how to feel about that because to somebody else they can say that is art for them because that's what art started describing. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's not art. All I'm saying is that these galleries, do, they do, they're not interested in painting. Oh, so they're not so they don't, the stuff that you they don't show art, painters. I, I applied to go to have an exhibition there for the last five years. I've got an email from the director, the new director that they employed from Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, and he just told me I will never have an exhibition there while he's the director. Because he doesn't show paintings, you know. So right, this is so what you're up against as a painter in Ireland. It's, very difficult to get the establishment to show paintings because the fashion at the moment is conceptual art and it has been for a very long time. Okay, um, I want to ask you, um, uh, what is your inspiration basically when you're making your art? Do you have anything that you look into and say, okay, that is it, I'm going into that? Well, as I say, I have three different kind of styles. I'd probably put them into three categories. It's all expressionist art mm -hmm. in a sense. like very expressive paint, the, the paint strokes mm -hmm. would be quite wild. I'm not one for really fine finishing. Yes. I like I like to leave um, p 
people can see the brush strokes. Right, right. So right. I would call myself an expressionist, impressionist yeah. painter. Like, I love the impressionists. People I connect more to that because they feel like that's a human being painting. They're yeah. not basically perfect. Only. Yeah, there are, there are plenty of painters out there who can paint, like, a photograph. Mm -hmm. To me, I've no interest in painting picture like a photograph because what's the point? You've got a camera to do that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it's okay. it, it's great if my paintings are actually look like paintings, if you know what I mean, rather than look like a photograph. Mm -hmm. So um, the three different styles I have, I would say I've got commercial, which is like realistic, landscapes, seascapes, and portraits. Okay. Um, then I have political art, which I love doing. A lot of my work is about politics, the church, mm -hmm. and all the things that I think are wrong in the world. And for me, this is very important to do that. And then you've got other kinds of art where I'm just trying to express whatever's in my, feel in my mind. I love working from my subconscious mind. I love to get absorbed into doing a series of paintings mm -hmm. and for two or three weeks you just get so absorbed that you don't really think about anything else. Like okay. one, one time I painted for five days and five nights without going to bed at all. I just, wow. I just painted without stopping. That is a long time. And okay. uh, I drank a lot of vodka to keep me going, you know. So. Um, they go the bells. You guys are gonna hear some bells going off in the back there, so it's healthy for you. Look it up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're here under St. Coleman's Cathedral in Cove, which is a very famous cathedral. Uh, it's, a, it's about the same age as my house here, which is about 120 years old. And um, the best thing about those bells is Laurel and Hardy came to Cove. Mm -hmm. a long Who's time. Laurel and Hardy? Laurel and Hardy are some of the first comedians to ever make films. The old black and white films, you know Charlie Chaplin? Yes. So they were around the same time. They were a comedy couple in the black and white movies with no sound, before there was sound. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they were fantastic. They're probably the most famous okay. of all. And they came to Cor Cove and they, 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 they played the Laurel and Hardy tune on the bells. The and it made them so happy they cried. So wow. it's a great story. Okay. And you know the Titanic came to Cove as well, which oh, is another great story about Cove. Yeah? Yeah, so, it was sorry. the last place the Titanic came to. Was, Did it go to Belfast then? Um, it came from Liverpool. So, yeah, it was made in Belfast. Yeah. But it sailed from Liverpool, Liverpool went to Southampton. Southampton, Cove, and then out into the Atlantic and okay. sank. So it's a very sad story, but yeah. they picked up 160 people here in, in Cove. Here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think we knew this stuff. Yeah. I could have stopped in Belfast. Anyway, I'm not. I, I I did a very deep dive on Titanic, but more of more of like where where the explosion happened, what happened when the whole thing sank and everything. Okay. I did a painting of the Titanic and the whole story, so I'll show that to you later. That I want to see. Yeah. Okay. Um. So um. I wanted to ask you while the bells are ringing and making. Christmas sound in the back. Uh, so you said you, you were painting for um, say um, five days, five nights. Yeah. And you basically only had vodka or something? You just drink yeah, vodka, vodka and um, other substances. We do not want to mention the camera. But anyway, but so five, how, how, how many paintings you do? PJ, PJ, I'm an artist, you know, I artist. Understand, I understand, you artists, guys, you artists, guys have to go into your deep mindset. Let me tell you something. I think a lot of artists use different substances to inspire them. Yeah. It's always been that case. And, and I'm not any different to any other artist. I believe in expanding the mind through using different substances. And this helps me work. It helps my subconscious mind. For you, just yeah. for the record, not for any artists out there that want. For you, you do what inspires you. Me and John and I encourage you guys to uh, uh, do substances. I'm not talking about class A's, okay? Yeah, I, 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 don't, know. Not, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking, talking about. about. I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Any. I don't know. But uh, so I'm talking about cannabis, okay? And I believe. Oh right, yeah, believe, yeah, yes, we're all for cannabis. I believe I it should be legalized, and I have spoken about this yeah. live on RTE, 
Joe Duffy did a show with me as the star mm-hmm. of the show for two days, yes. talking about cannabis and legalizing it because it's crazy. They're criminalizing young people for what? Smoking a bit of dope. It's just crazy. The politicians are a disgrace. They won't even discuss drugs. They've never dis- We have so many drug problems in this country, and the politicians sit up there in the doll and they never have ever discussed the drug problems of Ireland in the government, which is just a total disgrace. Okay. So I'm definitely an advocate for legalizing cannabis, and I, I think it's a very good drug. It helped me a lot in my career. Mm-hmm. I, I, it makes me happy. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it, I think it's, good, it's good it for makes people's everyone health happy. as well. <laughs> What? It makes everyone happy. I think it makes everyone happy. <laughs> uh, unless you have some bad side effect to it. Um, so what painting were you painting when you were... Um, and not to get off in the cannabis scene. Yeah. Do okay. get off in the cannabis You might scene. want to cut that out because you, you don't want to be sending out that message. It's cool. No, I'm not sending the message for anything. Listen, I, 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 I'm all for people being who they are um, as long as it makes them comfortable and yeah. stuff like that. It's not bringing no harm to them. Yeah. That is all. If you like cannabis... You do you. I don't judge anyone for that. Yeah. You know, you understand? But, you know, what I'm just saying is, you know, um, uh, I told you we were talking about when you say substance, I thought you were talking about some other stuff. No. And I was like, I'm not for inspiring people, artists, yeah. to go collect the inspiration from that. No. If you find something that inspires you, you do you. That's why I asked you, basically, what inspires you. What I'm really curious about is, like, what the fuck were you painting in those five days Five nights yeah. with vodka and whatever substances and kind of cannabis, stuff. Yeah. Vodka and cannabis, let's say. Well, I, I had a big exhibition coming up, okay. so I was under pressure. And that's why I had to stay up for five days and five nights to get a lot of paintings. So I probably finished a lot of paintings in those five days and five nights. Okay. I, I did a series of maybe 50 paintings for one exhibition. It was Jesus. a really big exhibition in Cork City mm-hmm. in the Vision Centre on North Main Street. And um, it was a fantastic exhibition. It was opened by a guy called Neil Prendival. Mm-hmm. He's a DJ on one of the ro- local radio stations. And, um, you know, the politicians came, the Lord Mayor and all that sort of, you know. But luckily, they weren't making any speeches at the exhibition because mm-hmm. usually when you get a politician come along, and open an art exhibition like yeah. they don't have a clue what to say like when they start talking about art it's obvious that they don't know very much that's in my experience where's your mindset with politics and art where's um, your mind at right now then? well i think this country has a lot of politicians who know nothing about art most of them aren't interested in the arts most of them use the arts because they get into the newspapers, they get into the media by turning up at arts events. Mm-hmm. So politicians are very good at um, using arts mm-hmm. for themselves, but they have no real interest or knowledge in the arts. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the biggest problem in the arts in Ireland is that they keep um, giving the wrong people the jobs in power in the arts in Ireland. Like you've got arts officers, you've got directors of big galleries, you've got people on the arts council. You have the NCFA, which is the National Campaign for the Arts, mm-hmm. and it's run by administrators for administrators, the, the Arts Council and the NCFA, the National Campaign for the Arts. They claim to be the voice of the artists in Ireland, and yet they have no artists on their committee, not one. And this is the, this is the same throughout the arts in Ireland. The artists are kept out of all the important decision-making committees in the arts, and all the funding goes through these administrators and arts directors who are all earning lots of money out of the arts. They're the only people who are earning lots of money out of the arts because mm-hmm. most of the artists in Ireland f- struggle to even make ends meet. You know, it's not like... I think that's everywhere for yeah. most of the arts. Like the majority of the artists. Like I remember uh, when I, I wanted to pursue art and I, the heartbroken side when I was in college, when I was doing graphic design at the same time as well, and I had a choice to switch, I could have switched to art. But once I heard that, like I, I loved to sit down and paint and express myself. I think yeah. the more you do it, the more you develop the skill. But once I heard that, you know, the part about that, that you can be homeless and can be a really great artist, I was like, yeah, no. I, 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 I was passionate about it. I don't think I was probably not passionate 
And now, if, if I had the whole money for it, to go for it, whatever, good background or whatever, I would have gone for it. But for me, I, I think it's sad that artists, even some of them have to like die to basically have the respect that they deserve in their, you know. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, the whole system is set up that even though there is lots of funding going into the arts, it's all going to the wrong people, the administrators, the directors, they spend it all. It doesn't go to the artists, so therefore, you know, very little of the money actually goes to art projects or to the artists. The money is wasted and squandered in the arts. Whereas yeah. if these people were promoting Irish artists, say for example the Arts Council, mm -hmm. they actually promoted Irish artists. They'd have a website with every artist in Ireland on it. They'd be pushing it abroad. They'd be. They'd Are be you certain that there's not there's no website positive, out there? No, nothing like that. They don't do that. Basically, the Arts Council is set up for artists to apply for grants and bursaries of them. And you have to send hugely detailed application forms that take so ages. You nearly need to, be, it's basically you need to be an administrator to apply for these grants. Mm -hmm. And very few artists actually get them. They generally tend to be favourite artists of the people who are on the committees, friends. It's all like that. Everything in Ireland is like that. It's who you know. It's not what you know. Mm, I heard so, that before. So if you know somebody... I think that's everywhere, with jobs and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So um, basically, the, even the galleries in Ireland that are funded by the Arts Council and the government, they generally tend to not really promote the artists. And most of the government-funded art galleries, they're not even allowed to sell the art, would you believe? Okay. So... They're not much used to the artists. If you can't sell their art in the galleries, why? What? What are they supposed to do? Like they, they have to sell their art to make money, mm -hmm. and yet there's not one government organisation set up that helps artists to sell their work. Yeah, that is something that we need. Like the arts council could be supplying, they could employ a load of salespeople to sell our work. They could employ lawyers to represent us when we need legal advice they could employ accountants the, the, the work, we need yeah. accountants we need people to help us with the business side yeah, of being art, an artist yeah. because that is the hardest bit about being an artist is trying to promote yourself trying to do the business side trying to do the sales side i mean that takes up a huge amount of time mm -hmm. if, if i was to go about trying to sell my work it requires me to stop painting and to concentrate go on the computer get cards printed up, get um, publicity, yeah. uh, pay for advertising, all this kind of stuff. You need the management and yeah. the assistance to go there, into There's no kind of art stuff. management in Ireland. There's yeah. no agents. There's galleries, but mm -hmm. a lot of the private galleries have shut down in Ireland because of the recession. Yeah. Since 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. the country went into a deep recession for 10 years. Um, I didn't sell anything for 10 years. It was just impossible. Nobody was buying art. It's only picked up in the last couple of years. So that's the kind of help that artists need. We, they need people to sell their work, mm -hmm. to promote their work, to bring the, bring the Irish artists abroad, rent out galleries in Paris or something and show off the Irish artists. But you see, there's a, an organisation called Astona. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's, no, like, it's like an elite. It's like an elite artist group in Ireland. It's it's where all the top artists they get paid maybe three hundred euros a week from the mm -hmm. government, and once they're on a stone, they're there for the rest of their life. And to me, it's it's like a way of paying them off to keep them quiet because you never hear a stone or anybody in there speaking up for artists and. The injustices of the arts in Ireland. They just, it's like once they're in Astana, what do they do? I don't know, but it's, I don't think it's any good for the arts in Ireland, Astana. Okay. Uh, you've got this elite level of artists, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's very good for the rest of the artists in the country. I was going to compare art to football, okay? Mm -hmm. So you know in football that every team puts a lot of effort into their youth academies mm -hmm. and they'll train these young footballers to a very high degree hoping that they will be successful 
and they'll be able to sell them or they'll be able to play for the team, yeah. which is a lot cheaper than buying a football buy because, because you know how much they cost. You groom them and then, you know, they cost millions. So, you train them. so football is an extremely successful business. And they it's have agents everywhere, they have it's lawyers and everything. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's one of the worst things about football is how, how much the money has taken over the whole thing. Yeah. And the billionaires own it now. It's like they... they football club. Yeah, yeah it's just... Is. I, I really love football, but I've kind of lost a bit of faith in it. But I'm just trying to compare, like, how much effort is put in to the up-and-coming artists, or, sorry, footballers. And this isn't happening with the artists at all. And this is what I believe should be happening. You know, that the whole thing should be set up to discovering new artists and promoting them and helping them get up the ladder. Okay. And... You know, say for example, our national broadcaster, RTE, mm -hmm. it drives me nuts that every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes, every time they have an ad break, they say RTE, supporting the arts, supporting artists. And yet, I've never seen them really promote an Irish artist. I've never seen a young artist become famous because of RTE, because... They don't really have many arts programs. They might on the radio, they have a few on the radio, but very rarely are they promoting up and coming artists. They're both basically talking about the established artists mm -hmm. and the famous artists. But um, yeah, RTE are a very hypocritical organization. I think they're not really supporting the arts because they refuse to tell the truth. Okay. I've, I've tried to tell this story that I've told you on RTE, on, Joe Duffy. I don't, think, I don't think they would have, would have never let you. Imagine you, me coming to your house and to trash your house in your house. <laughs> <laughs> that would never happen. But in, in speaking of promotion, I, I want to talk about some of your work. So I can, yeah. I, I can promote some of your work here. I want to talk about some of your work as we go on the rail. The one behind us. I want to talk about the one behind yeah. us first. Okay. You spoke about, you said you're doing some work for the environment. Yeah. This what is, is this is my new series, my latest series, which is titled Animals Matter, after the Black Lives Matter, Super. it inspired yes, me, yes, okay? Yes, yes, because yes. animals matter just as much as humans, mm -hmm. if not more. To be honest with you, I think the world would be a better place with no humans. I really do. I think the world... You guys heard John, so you guys can go on the comments <laughs> and let him know if he's right some and there's a lot of people that think that but go ahead uh, you were saying about the yeah, animals can you right? imagine the world what a paradise it would be without humans yeah it would be amazing i love that film with um, will smith in the center of new york where, uh, i am legend yeah yeah and it's, it's amazing no, isn't it zombies, so they're lions of running around yeah but just, that's what this is about it's the same thing right what is during, this painting called during, during, the, painting? during the pandemic yeah it's called Dragon, the kimono dragon in Ireland. Right? This is a kimono dragon. They don't live in Ireland. They're basically um, uh, in the Pacific Ocean on the islands there. I think it's the Galapagos or one of those um, so are you, islands. Are you, are you basically, basically what I'm saying is this is, this is after the humans have been mm -hmm. uh, extinct. Yeah. This is after humans. This is Ireland after the humans have gone. You can see a few empty cottages up mm -hmm. here. And the, come on, the animals take back take the world. Over, yeah. So since the lockdown, um, I've been walking the beaches of Cork Harbour. Mm -hmm. I noticed a lot of rubbish on the beach, particularly plastics, fishing tackle, stuff that is very hard to break down, but it is breaking down. Yeah. There's so many plastic bottles. And it's polluting this here. Here in the harbour, in Cork Harbour, you have... It's about two or three feet deep down into the ground, all the plastic bottles, there's so many of them, that when you walk on the ground, you can hear them all crumpling underneath you. That's and terrible. it's like, there's so much of it here because the council never cleans the shoreline. They say they're not responsible for the shoreline. And also, the, who is though? and the Port of Cork, they claim they have no responsibility. So nobody takes responsibility for cleaning the shoreline, except myself and some other people like um, Extinction Rebellion we were out cleaning the beaches it's fair but, to you. but we realised it's too difficult you know because as I say it's two or three foot deep and it's embedded into all the seaweed and everything which is rotting so mm -hmm. it's disgusting it's really smelly 
horrible. It, you just can't do it. You need to get big diggers in to get rid of it. And it's you're using bad. you're using basically uh, disposable materials that you find around to paint yeah. on them. So Is what it? I did, yeah, when I when I was cleaning the beaches, I noticed all this corrugated metal on the beach, and I started painting animals that are struggling to survive because of humans in the yeah. oceans. And I so have rhinos. I've got sharks, sharks. I've got rhinos, I've got turtles, I've got uh, polar bears, I've got a, I've got a raven because I love ravens. Do you like ravens? Um, um, I don't have a deep connection with ravens, but uh, maybe one day when I do, I might, I might come to like them. But, uh, they're really clever, you know. Yeah? Yeah, they're really clever. Like they're more clever than dolphins and monkeys. They say the most clever. Ravens. They, they 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 reckon it's the most clever animal in on the planet. I sometimes confuse them like, for. Um, I sometimes confuse ravens for. Um, what are the other um, are birds that look like them? Crows. Yeah, crows. Well, there are fi there are five or six different types of crows. Raven is one of them. Yeah. You've got jackdaws. Oh, so it's crows. Well. So I was yeah. right. I was right. Crow. A raven is a crow. Yeah. You've got jackdaws. You've got. Magpies, I'll, I, they're yeah, all magpies, crows. Yeah. I'll, I, always, I always think they're like savage birds. Yeah. <laughs> like you have the normal birds and then you have the savage birds, the crows. Yeah. You know, I always think, but the always, I always see them running together, they always get hungry and stuff like that. I always I, go, I, and, I go and feed them in the harbor, all my leftover food that's I good. bring down to the crows. They probably love you when you yeah. come down with food and stuff, they all kind of gather together. They're jump. really clever creatures, I love them. They actually can make their own tools. You know? Yeah, that's, it's, this is how they did the experiments on the crows to find out how clever they were. They put they probably the know more. They probably, they probably know more. Um, so uh, uh, this painting, how, how old is this painting there? This painting is two years old now. Okay. Um, yeah, my most recent ones have been more commercial because I've got a new gallery down in Kinsale. Mm -hmm. and they're taking my work. They wanted some... Seascapes and uh, views. No, the word, views where is this new the gallery? Let the people know where it is. The, the new gallery is is in Kinsale and it's called the. Oh God, I'm trying to remember. I, I will come back to that because yeah, I, I no forgot worries. the name of the I'll gallery. I'll put it down for you guys. You guys can check yeah. it out uh, on his website and check out the new gallery. Um, so tell me something. Do you have a favorite painting here that you basically look into it? Uh, uh, you know, like most artists, they had one that that one yeah, painting yeah. that haunted them, or, or that they just fell in love with it. Stuff. Do you have that one? You know, I have a few one? of them, but there's um, there's a triptych upstairs. A triptych is three paintings that yeah. go together. Yes, they're not meant to be separated, so it's upstairs. There's one above here as well. I think I, I don't know if you guys see. Yeah, this is a there. triptych of Cork City. I yeah. love I love that one as well. It's the Docklands area of Cork City. Um, this is another subject that is very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. I did I did a series of paintings of Cork mm -hmm. Harbour and it led me on to doing uh, a series of paintings of Cork City as well mm -hmm. because I was very upset of the amount of demolishing of old buildings in Cork. Yeah. And during the Celtic Tiger when we were when we were going through the boom mm -hmm. in two thousand and like three to two thousand and eight, there was so many buildings knocked down. And I, I have a big passion for old architecture. I love stonework, I love brickwork, and good carpentry. So um, I've been fighting to save some buildings in Cork for a long time. They're called the Port of Cork Buildings. How do you fight that? How do you... Well, it's been a long campaign. Do you, do you do a... I, I did a petition. I okay. got 2,500 people to sign that. It's... Um, it's online. If any of you guys want to sign it, just go save the Port of Cork buildings and you'll be able to read about it. Basically, the Port of Cork company is a semi-state company mm -hmm. and they are moving to another part of the harbour. So they want to sell these buildings, which are belong to the state. Mm -hmm. And they're really important historical buildings. They were built 200 years ago during the Napoleonic Wars okay. by French prisoners French prison. yeah, on, okay. on the Spike Island. So... It's beautiful architecture, beautiful stonework, beautiful woodwork. It should be preserved. It should museum, be, not for living. Not yeah, for living, I've been right. I've been campaigning to have it as a maritime museum because yeah. Cork Harbour has the most incredible maritime history of nearly any harbour in the world. And you said it's the second largest or yeah, it's the second harbor largest harbour in the world, in the world. natural harbour after Sydney Harbour. So that's in Ireland, natural city, natural city in Ireland. Not Germany, not Belgium, not Portugal. No, I'm joking. 
all your harvest is pulled there. So, so, um, so the port of Cork buildings, right? I was trying to save them, mm -hmm. and it went on for eight years fighting with politicians, and eventually went to on board Planola, and I had to appeal all that. But they've given permission now for a 35 story, five star hotel to be built on top of these buildings. So they're going to be demolished? No, no, they're oh, going to be okay. kept and preserved. Yes. But it's going to be a five star hotel. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a, a huge skyscraper built on top of them. In Cork? Yeah. Jeez, I am it's going to be the here. biggest building in Ireland. That's great. Oh, it's not. It's so tell me something. Tell me something. Terrible. Well, for some people, it's great. Yeah. But I see the love that you have for Cork where you were born in Dublin. Is there any connection that you go back to Dublin, you look at it, or you're like, you know what, now? Nah. Forget that. No, I have no interest in going back to Cork, Dublin. No, not going yeah. back, but you yeah. have any connections at all? Because you, oh really yeah, I've still Cork. got family and friends in Dublin. Apart yeah. from them, anything artistic or stuff. Not no offense to you guys, family. You know. Um, well, obviously, um, I need to get into some galleries in Dublin because the ones in Cork are shit, basically. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on now. He said that. <laughs> that I did. Bit. The people in <laughs> the arts are shit. He and said that. In Cork, I'm quite they sure are they totally well. shit. They do nothing for the Cork artists. Okay. It, it's a disgrace. Like Cork, it's a, dead, you know? it's a dead end for artists. It really is. Okay. So, um, um, with all the arts and how long you've been painting. So, basically, uh, John. Um, I tell it as it is, guys. Okay. I always do. And I get myself into trouble. And these guys who run the arts, they hate me. Right? Because I tell the truth. Yeah, that, listen. Um, <laughs> that's him. <laughs> that is definitely him. That has nothing to do with me. Okay? <laughs> but uh, uh, I want to say, um, uh, if the people want to find, when's your next exhibition? Is there any exhibition coming up next? There's nothing, nothing coming up. I was supposed to have an exhibition in the hotel in Cork, mm -hmm. and the manager never bothered contacting me, yeah. you know. This is the kind of attitude oh, yeah. you come up against, you know. Okay, so so they just they just hate you. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> no, this is maybe that's good. That could give you more inspiration to create more art. Just go somewhere else. I'm quite sure somebody would love to take these lovely paintings, guys. You guys will have to see this. It's basically amazing. It's surreal watching this whole thing, and especially when you have three types of basically different arts coming in. It's just amazing. It's breathtaking, John. Um. Just before we close off here, if anybody wants to see your art at all live, is that a possibility? Even with you know pandemics, kind of you know the pandemics kind of yeah. Like well, that. you know, as I, as you can see here, I have got my own art gallery here in Cove. Okay. It's called Coley Moore the Artist's House. I have a page on Facebook, Coley Moore the Artist's House. You can see I put on events here. When the gallery is open, I have music evenings. Forty people sitting down here as an audience. Mm -hmm. uh, I put on. Plays, I host plays, storytelling evenings, music evenings. So a lot if of people. This is happening here, right? Yeah, regularly? yeah, regularly. Oh. This is the stage area here on oh, the right I hand see. side. So you have you can. It's have very a, cozy, like you know. You can have bands playing there and forty people sitting down here. I put on many events here. Some very famous oh. people have played in here. So what the stage and, where, the, where, where the whole thing goes down? I feel privileged. Yeah, and um, I have a website. John Adams Artist .ie. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook check is it out. It'll be the, Facebook it'll be is John Adams link. Artist and Instagram is John Adams Paintings. Okay, John Adams Paintings. Guys, listen, uh, if you guys have time, go ahead and check that out. Um, John, it's been a pleasure. DJ, I really you. like to thank you for Just coming same. along with all your equipment. Thank and, you. Yes, you know, yes, it's yes, a real yes. pleasure to meet you. It's you're amazing, such a cool guy. Before. I've been watching your program, uh, your yes. podcast, and see some you, of you guys need to be like John. You, you have some guys. amazing guys on your podcast. Thank like, you. I really Thank want to get to know some of your friends Thank too. You. Thank you. No worries. Listen, uh, John. Anytime, you know, uh, whenever you want to pop down the studio, we can do it. Uh, listen, this is amazing. I love this cove. Listen, guys, after this, we're going to walk down the harbor and basically get to know this place. There's amazing architecture somewhere here. Yeah. I don't know. It looks that it's not from Ireland. It's like a downhill. I, I drove down there. Oh, yeah. The I deck like, of cards. But it was just That's what going down, it. Yeah. going down. I was like, what is this? It was oh, basically just going amazing, down. amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing architecture. But anyway, listen. What about going out sailing on my boat? Yes. Oh, ha, uh, ha. Okay, guys. I'm definitely leaving you guys after this. Listen, you guys subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Yours truly, the boy with the number two. Leave it all down there. Uh, make sure you go ahead and, um, you know, like, 
just the thumbs up, all that kind of goofy stuff, the bell, all that kind of stuff. Thank you very much for watching. John, thank you very much for having us here. Okay, thank you very Cheers. much. Cheers. Okay, um, and we're promoting the program. Okay, thank you. And that is us. Awesome.